Well, welcome back to another Coffee and a Chat Survival Saturday edition. So today I think I'm going to talk about what I use to wash my laundry, which is the same thing that I use for doing a lot of my cleaning. Now, I've in the video that I did on making vinegar, I told you I use vinegar in a lot of my cleaning, and I do. But you know when you need, because, okay, so part of this for me is trying to be as chemical free as possible. Um, not that these aren't chemicals, but you know the, the really harsh chemicals that we have in our cleaners and our soaps and stuff. I'm having some issues <laughs> um, in my body right now, and uh, I can about guarantee that what is causing them is coming from some of the food that I've been eating lately that has different additives and uh, I, I've eaten some things that with the bioengineered in it and stuff. <sighs> I think we're a lot more sensitive to those things that our bodies were not meant to have those things in them. Uh, yeah, when you start reading ingredients and you can't even pronounce half of, of them, if I can't pronounce it, I surely don't need to. <laughs> To be eating it but I do um, notice you know trying to keep as organic as I can and all but you know let's just be honest um, you know I know like at our house we're just trying to survive and uh, the cost of everything everything is going up 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 and the income is not going up, up, up. So being able to afford things is becoming more and more difficult, not just for us, but for a lot of people. I mean, Marvin and I have been there for a while. We've been in the, the survival mode for a little while now, but we're finding more and more people that are in that mode. And so um, something I'll probably talk about a little more, you know, the reasons why and all in a, another video, and it'll, I'm sure, be a Survival Saturday video, is that our household this month is growing. We've got different family members that are moving in or coming to stay temporarily or whatever, and it's all so we can help each other out and for some to try and uh, survive because financially they can't, and and it's not that Marvin and I can afford to uh, support them because we can't. We can't hardly, you know, we, we're struggling. But when you pull your resources together and come together and try to help out each other, then then everybody can, can come out okay. Um, where on your own, you might not be doing so good. So just a, another thing I was talking to somebody about that I think yesterday uh, morning, I was talking to a lady and about how, you know, it's going from Marvin and I to Marvin and I and some kids and a grandson and, you know, that we're, we're you know, the Lord blessed us with a big house, way too big. And I kept saying, why are we in this big house? And it's not like new or fancy at all. The poor house is, str <laughs> is struggling to survive at times. But but we've got the space and the bedrooms and the bathrooms that for there to be more people. Now, originally, a lot of that was because my mom and dad lived with us their last years. and uh, But then they've been gone for a while. And here we are in this big house. And, you know, the Lord knew that this was going to be necessary. But when I was speaking with this woman yesterday, you know, I said it's like the, the 1930s all over again. You know, it's it's been almost 100 years and we're seeing history repeat itself that more and more families are doing that where they're combining households to try to help each other and by combining resources to survive. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that. But anyway, that's not what this one's about. This one's about cleaners. Um, but, you know, with the price of things going up and making it harder to get stuff and, uh, you know, we get food from the food bank. So we get stuff that is not really maybe the best for us. Um, there's a lot of artificial this, artificial that that's put in stuff. 
And uh, if it's not the root cause of what's going on with me, I do know it's not helping any. So for me personally, part of survival is trying to stay healthy and, and feeling good, which I haven't been here lately feeling quite as good as I would like to. But uh, that's okay. God's taking care of me and showing me stuff to do. And we'll, we'll get through it, you know, because life happens. But uh, in that survival, I have been working for several years to lessen these harsh chemicals being in our home. And so one of them was trying to come up. First, it was just trying to come up with the laundry soap. And you guys have tried all kinds of things. I've done liquid ones. I, I mean, I have, have been all through YouTube over the years. You know, every time somebody had a laundry soap recipe, you know, I'm watching it and trying to figure it out. And, and the other thing with me is I believe that as simple as you can keep it, that that's better too. So... Like I said, I've tried all kinds of stuff. They were okay and some, you know, all right. But a lot of the liquid soaps I found kind of gummed things up because you're using different kinds of bar soap in it. And that didn't necessarily... Now, I do sometimes in my laundry, I, you know, where I was talking about using um, the ends of the soap to make more soap, uh, I do, you know, use watered down uh, bar soap that I do put into my laundry sometimes, but it's really watered down. It's not a high concentration and I'm not putting a ton in there. Where when I was making the liquid uh, detergent, there was a lot in them. And I just, for me, found that it, it uh, I think, created some other problems. And so then I tried making the dry versions and everything and anyhow. Then I just started going, wait, how simple can I get this? So here's how simple I've got it. And this works great for me. Now you might hear some rumbling in the background because it is massive storms today. We've already had almost seven inches of rain today and uh, thunder and lightning thunder all through the night. And plus Marvin's trying to uh, fix a door on one of the bedrooms for our daughter so that it will close all the way because it, you know, houses shift and it, it stopped wanting to shut. So he's, so you might hear some pounding with that because whatever I'm doing, life still goes on. Okay. So with the simplest that I have come down to, and I've been using this for a couple of years now, and I don't just use it from laundry, but I, you know, in place of Comet or Ajax, it works great for that too. In fact, it works in some things, it works better. Uh, like when I have to clean my stove, you know, and you've got all that built on grease or up on the, the uh, hood vent, um, it, that can be a chore to clean. And this, I just put a little bit on a damp rag and wipe it down and it just cuts right through it. So I, I love this stuff. So are you ready for my recipe? It's very simple. I use three parts baking soda, two parts table salt, and then I use three parts, sometimes borax or, but most of the time washing soda. And, uh, and you can make your own washing soda. It's not that hard. It's baking soda that you heat up in the oven. Um, I've got recipes for it, but I haven't tried it yet. So I'll have to try that. And if it works out, okay, I may share that with you guys too. Because that could, you pay a lot for washing soda and, and you can get the same amount of baking soda that you can turn into washing soda for pennies on the dollar. So I've already been thinking about that, that I need to try that out and see how that works and just start making my own washing soda because I would save some more money that way. But I'm just, haven't got that far yet. So if, you know, if you don't understand parts, because I know that used to confuse me, but it's like this. If I was using a cup, measure cup, I would use, I would put in, which is usually what I use, three cups of baking soda, two cups of salt, and three cups of washing soda, or it, you can use borax. Um, now, like today I had to make up a batch. I have no washing soda, I have no borax, so I just did three cups of baking soda to two cups of salt. 
and it's fine. The salt and the baking soda are the most important ingredients in it. The washing soda or the borax just give it an, a little bit extra kick. But what I love about it, now in the laundry, the salt actually helps kind of soften the water some. But when I'm like cleaning a sink or a toilet, it gives me that grit, you know, that, that will, um, you know, scour uh, whatever it is I'm, I'm washing. But it also dissolves and it doesn't scratch and, and it works out just fine. So the only other thing I would say on this too is, again... I've made mistakes and I've learned from my mistakes. And so I share those with you in case you would rather learn from my mistake. But if, if you're one that just feels you need to make your own error, well, you just go right ahead. But I'm really, you know, I don't like plastic. So I'm always putting things in glass. And I, when I did the one on, you know, for what I use for washing my hair, I said I put it in a plastic bottle because glass does not belong in a shower or a bathtub or, yeah. Well, it doesn't belong in the laundry room or around sinks where you're cleaning or anything either. And that I went ahead and found out the hard way. You know, I just went, you know, I was like, you know, it's not like when you're in the shower with the, the glass jar, you know, and then it breaks and you've got glass under your feet or whatever, you know, I was kind of thinking along those lines, but it slipped and it, I actually, okay, so the first time was I had forgotten, left the jar on my my dryer next to my washing machine. And when the washing machine went into the spin cycle, it spun the jar of cleaner right off and onto the floor. Now, it didn't break, but it could have. And it probably did crack that jar or weaken it because then what happened was I was using it to clean a sink and I had the jar there and I just, you know, sprinkled some out into the sink, set the jar down and anyway, ended up not setting it quite right or something. I don't know, but the, the jar ended up falling into the sink and shattering. So I lost that whole jar full of cleaner and I had a mess with broken glass and I found it didn't all go in the sink either. Some of it was on the counter. Some had fallen down onto the floor. It was a mess. And so I use a big old plastic jug and that, it's probably about a half gallon size that used to have something else in it. I don't know. I think it had protein powder in it at one time. And, but it's a really heavy duty plastic jug. So I had um, hung on to it. Well, I, I dump in all my ingredients into that jug and then I just turn that jug like this and it takes about 15 times and you can, you can hear it in there as it mixes because the salt sounds so much different from the others and as it mixes, it gets quieter and quieter and quieter. And so after about 15 turns, because when I did it this morning, I went ahead and counted so I would know you know, because usually I just do it. And I thought, well, I'll count and kind of get an idea. And it took 15 turns. And then I took my little scoop that I've got in there that I saved out of something else yet. Or maybe that was for the protein powder. I don't know. But I've got little things like that I saved because you never know when you're going to need them. And, uh, you know, and I sprinkled some out and it was mixed really well. So super easy. I used to, you know, oh, I mean, I've done it in the blender. I've done it, you know, with a spoon or a whisk trying to mix it up and you get the dust everywhere and that's not good. And, you know, you don't want to be breathing that in, especially if you're using borax. And, oh, my word. And I was like, there's got to be an easier way. And I keep going. And so I think it's as simple as I can get it. Dump the ingredients into the jug you know, turn it back and forth, not even shaking it, just turn it back and forth 15 times, done. And, you know, and that jug can last me quite a while. I don't have to mix it up too terribly often. Well, a little bit more now because I've got other people using it too. So, um, and because we've already got some here. So there's uh, a little more laundry sometimes and, and stuff. So anyway, it's very simple. It gets things clean. It uh, can really help freshen. The baking soda is really good for taking out odors. And it and baking soda cleans pretty well. Sometimes I have had something that's really, um, really dirty. Like I had a shirt here not too long ago that had got some blood on it. And so the first washing, 
it had almost all, it took almost all of it out. I was really impressed because blood is very hard to get out of stuff, but there was still kind of that ghost image of it there. And so I put it through the next load of laundry and I just put some vinegar in there with my baking soda, salt and washing soda mix. And it took it, the rest of it right out. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results. And again, I can make, you know, a half gallon jug of that that will last me a few months usually. Um, we'll see, like I said, it's getting used a little more often now. So it might only last me six or seven weeks now. We'll see. But uh, it, it only costs pennies, literally pennies to make it. So uh, I'm happy with it. It does the job. It doesn't hardly cost me anything. And again, pretty easy ingredients. And and also with the ingredients, you know, of salt and baking soda and borax or washing soda, those are things that you can buy up super cheap. I mean, and I don't buy like the, the salt, the table salt and stuff with the caking or anti-caking stuff in it or anything. I've gotten away from that too. And I just, I go to the big boxes of pickling salt or um, kosher salt or whatever. I just, I go for the best price I can get. And especially when I'm just using it for cleaning. So it doesn't, I mean, I can get this a great big box for what, what did I pay last time? Maybe two fifty nine or something for that. And I can get a, uh, a good size box, one of the big boxes of baking soda for under $2. And the washing soda, that costs a little more. But like I said, I've, I've got to, I just got to try it and see how, how hard it is and how well it works as making my own washing soda from the baking soda. But I, um, so I don't always have that for an ingredient. And I don't, I don't know that I really really need it all that much. I've been thinking about it because so many times all I've had is the baking soda and the salt because I'll get the, you know, the big boxes super cheap. And then I put the, I, I take them out of the boxes so they don't draw moisture. I put them into glass, into canning jars and I stick them on my shelf. So I've got a lot. You can buy a lot and have that on hand. So that's pretty easy to come up with. It's not hard and and it doesn't go bad, you know. Salt and baking soda they don't they don't expire. They they last forever, pretty much. So you know they'll last my lifetime. So I just fill up my shelves with them, and then I've got them, and whenever I need it, which was great today when I was mixing because I mixed up a bigger batch than I normally do, and uh, so I had to go back to the shelf a couple of times to get to get another jar, but uh, it works well. And it does fine. It doesn't have perfumes. Now, I will say this. If you want a perfumey smell on your, you know, like using um, fabric softener and stuff like we usually do, like I used to do, and then the dryer sheets and all that, and you have all this smelly stuff. Well, okay, that's part of the problems is I'm very sensitive to perfumes. And so I, I do try to avoid that. But I can take essential oil. And, and put about 20 drops of essential oil, whatever scent I like, into my laundry, and it works just as well. And it doesn't have a toxic effect on my body. So, hey, win-win. So anyway, that's what I do. I hope that maybe there's something there that will help you. Um, I think that simplifying our lives and not making things really difficult, making it real easy and uh, inexpensive, is very important and just sometimes for our own sanity because I've been like today I'm just can can canning I had some stuff given to me and I'm not gonna lose it so <laughs> I've been chopping and you know packing jars and getting them in the canner and and trying to get all this stuff on the shelf and uh so yes, that adds a little more work and complication to my day. So when I had to make my soap, I was very thankful that it was as easy as just dumping a few, you know, a couple of ingredients, shake, 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 done. And I've got a half gallon of cleaner. So yep, simplicity. I like it. All right. 
Well, I hope this helps somebody. And, uh, you know, maybe you've got something that's even better or simpler or maybe a suggestion of something to use. I am, you know, as a substitute or whatever, I am always open to this. I am constantly trying to come up with, you know, things being better, being the best they can be, as simple as they can be. And so, you know, I, 10 years from now, this may not be how I'm making my cleaner. I would hope I figured out something even better yet. So leave comments in the suggestion, or let's do that over again. Leave suggestions in the comments or some of what your experiences are or what you do, because that leaves that information for everybody to look at and to get ideas of what they want to do. And that's it. In fact, I'll make a request. I have never found a natural, inexpensive way to replace dryer sheets. I do not use dryer sheets. Um, I quit using those 10 years ago. But the only thing that, that I miss about it is the ones that would take the static electricity out of the laundry. So I struggle with that. And I've tried the, I made a bunch of wool, the wool balls, dryer balls. That didn't work. Um, I had some of those the kind of uh, silicone ones they sell. That didn't work. I, I haven't found, I've never found anything that really works on that. So if you know a way to make it work, I would appreciate you leaving it in the comments and because I'm looking for that information for my own laundry. And also like when you, I will say with this, using this for my soap, it doesn't clog up my washing machine. It, it dissolves and goes through just fine. In fact, this works in the dishwasher, washer too. Just don't over put the amount of soap and, you know, or the cleaner, whatever. I guess we can't really call it soap, but don't overdo that. Um, that's another thing. Sometimes people just think more is better and that's not necessarily true. So don't, you know, I use probably in a large load of laundry, three tablespoons of this maybe. It's not a lot. It doesn't take a lot. And it's what it does because it all goes through the water and the water gets that kind of slimy feel to it that, you know, baking soda gets and it just, it works fine. So, um, yeah, but it's not got soap in it and it doesn't cling in your clothes and draw stuff. So like doing laundry that you hang out on the clothesline, not today because the rain is atrocious. Today I could just hang it out and let it wash it. <laughs> And then whenever the rain stops, it'll dry. But uh, that would be the most simple, simplified way of doing laundry, I suppose. But um, the clothes, I still get some crunchiness, but nothing like when I used to use store-bought detergent because that stuff would just linger in those clothes. In fact, when I quit using it, oh, I'd probably have to wash something three or four times before it would quit sudsing <laughs> in the washer. That's how bad. And I didn't overuse my soap. I used just a little amount, but it just seems to get right in there and cling. And if you've got fabric softener, when I'd use the liquid fabric softener in there, that made it even worse. So I get a cleaner clean with this there. How's that? All right. Now I got to go because I got to go check a canner. I love you guys. I hope you're doing really well. And again, Leave some ideas in the comments. I'm, you know, help me learn even more, okay? And let's help each other. I love you guys. I'll talk to you again real soon. You take care.